Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to the Copart Audi TT. A purchase of mine, which at the time I thought to be the biggest mistake of my life, but as if by some sort of miracle, it, it seems to have been a really great decision. I'll be completely honest with you, I have fallen head over heels for this car, like a schoolgirl to a football player. Quite embarrassingly so, I've become very emotionally attached to this thing just in the few weeks that I've owned it. Although having said that, I'm the sort of person that could become emotionally attached to a dustbin. But regardless, I'm absolutely obsessed with this thing and I've been very excited to film this video and then share it with you guys because I just think this is a hidden gem, a pot of gold for a motoring enthusiast on a budget, perhaps even a young or first time driver. This thing is absolutely splendid in so many ways, which I can't wait to talk to you about today. But as we have started the video outside the car on this gorgeous summer's afternoon, I wanted to just talk you through a few things that I love to do with the exterior of it. I just think the styling of this thing is, well, really good. When you really look at it, when you get to spend some time around these things, it's so unfussy, so unpretentious, and genuinely quite, well, charming is the word, but dare I say it, pretty. I love the headlight design. I love the simplistic lines, this sort of bubble shape all the way over the top. If I'm being really honest, especially this one being in the same color as a previous R8 test car I've had, the rear glass design reminds me of those R8s, just less the V10 engine in the back. I find that every time I go to a fuel station to fill this thing up with fuel, it feels really special because of the aluminium petrol cap cover. I like how despite the very small size of this car, the inside feels huge. A bit like a TARDIS, although not blue. But the one thing absolutely to this car's merit, which I was not expecting, is the engine. It's an absolute peach of an engine. And so the only way to really show you what I mean by that is to get in the car and finally go on my first drive in the very cheap Copart Audi TT. <laughs> so I've had this thing for probably a couple of weeks now and I've made a few videos with it as you've seen and I haven't been driving it all that much however well it depends how you look at it I've done just over 200 miles in this car and this genuinely as we all know was not what I was expecting to be doing firstly I was looking for a different car entirely for the channel and this one as we all know the story came along a little bit unexpectedly but it means that it's sort of now my new daily driver for the time being and yeah I've been doing some miles of this thing and I've just been blown away with how well brilliant it is over the 213 miles that I've currently now done in this car I've averaged 34 miles per gallon which may not seem like a lot to you but as someone who is normally driving things with engines with at least eight cylinders it seems like a great deal to me especially when twinned with the performance that you actually get from this engine for something with a 1.8 this thing i think really punches above its weight it feels like a 250 to 300 horsepower car in the way that it delivers the power it's on tiny wheels which makes the ride quality pretty smooth and supple but it still grips like something with much bigger profile the most apparent thing you you see when driving this car is it's light now i think i looked it up and i, I you have to correct me if i'm wrong i'm probably not quite there with the figures but i think i read something like 1280 kilos dry so no fluids in it's 1280 now if i remember correctly that's around or about 100 or, or so kilos lighter than my former Z4. And that wasn't a particularly heavy car to start with, but that extra reduction in weight seems to make up for the reduction also in displacement because, yeah, let me demonstrate. <laughs> like I say, it just seems to pull whatever speed, whatever gear you're in. So it will quite happily sit at 30 miles an hour in fourth or fifth gear, tootling along at 1500 RPM then when you get a national speed limit sign, you don't really need to change it out. You put your foot down and there's sort of a progressive nothing until 
in this case 2500 rpm where we hit boost and we're at 60 <laughs> from a 1.8 it's incredibly torquey down into third gear look we'll just throw it in here and it handles like something with so much more road presence it's, it's hard to explain you, well i i wasn't expecting it to be this dynamically good to drive cruising along at 50 or 60 miles an hour you just put your foot down and it's got power right there and you're overtaking before you know it now even when i got this car delivered and found out that it was okay drivable at least still then i thought it was going to be a bit of a bag of nails to drive and actually just not really my thing but uh, I don't know I don't know why but I just couldn't have been more wrong it's really fun to drive and I just second gear pull up to 60 front wheel drive so it's bouncing around all over the place it is very fun to drive and I really enjoy it it's one of those cars where I think on paper it's 0 to 60 in just under eight seconds and I could probably sit here and time it and that's what it would be but it just feels so much quicker it's hard to really explain why it's just the way in which this car delivers its power and it's really fun and, and one thing I, I really like about it and I know this is just how a turboed car works but you know some cars that I've owned previously like the Boxster like the Z4 like that 7 series to get to the power you've got to really use the gears use the revs but i feel like you could be cruising along on your way to work on your way to shops in a high gear low rpm but if you still want a little bit of that performance you just hoof your foot on the accelerator and it's there it's a far more accessible power plant than those highly strung normally aspirated early porsche or bmw six cylinders it's probably more accessible from an insurance and tax perspective as well so for someone that's a young driver that struggles to get cheap insurance but wants something fast and affordable to get into i would really genuinely look at one of these is that I feel way cooler than I should in a car that cost less than an iPhone. <laughs> it's just really surprised me in, in every good possible way, this thing. Not to mention the interior and, and these seats. I mean, I did say earlier, it feels really spacious in here and that's true. Okay, I'm not sure if you were someone actually wanting to sit in the back of the car, forget it but just the way it's all thought out. The heated seat buttons, they're these little rotary dials that you push in and out and select the setting you want. Even the electric window switches are really fun. I love the big circular dials in front of me. I love the design of the air vents, the way you twist them to select how much air you want to come through. And also, although these were probably the budget option and probably the thing that you'd get if you didn't spec anything more expensive, these seats, are so comfortable and the fact they're not full leather and they have this sort of fabric in the middle for me makes them feel more sporty but it is just this low down power so we're doing 40 miles an hour i'm going to put it in fourth gear okay so 40 miles an hour fourth gear it's about 2000 rpm i'm just going to put my foot down now so there's 40 50 60 and it's just it's just great maybe i've lost the plot and i just got just become a bit obsessed with this thing but really if you haven't driven one of these and i never intended to if i'm totally honest i never really took a second look at these things if you haven't driven one just have a go even if you drive something way more expensive i mean i drive very expensive cars quite a lot of the time i'm so lucky i can say that but i am in the position where i get some pretty fancy press cars in fact yesterday I was at something called SMMT which is a day where 
bunch of manufacturers bring their cars and people like me can just drive whatever we want. I drove an Alpine A110S, I drove the Maserati Grecali Trofeo and I got back in this afterwards and just had a bigger smile on my face than I did in anything that I drove there. <laughs> this is great, seriously, drive one. It just feels like really cheap, honest motoring. I mean, I filled the car up a couple of days ago and I've done 75 miles since and the tank is still reading full with a range of 330 miles. And it only costs 65, 70 quid to fill up in the first place. The feel of the brakes is really nice as well. You hit the pedal and you've got braking power right there where you want it. There's no travel at all and you can just really modulate it how you want. Now, a couple of drawbacks then. This car, I have to say, it is one gear short of perfection. If you do want to do any miles in this, and I'm probably gonna find this out in the next few weeks when I take it on an adventure, at 70 miles an hour, you're at the best part of three and a half thousand RPM. And that is a little bit noisy and also just a bit annoying. I'm constantly grabbing the gear stick and, and going for sixth and, it, and it's not there. Also, the positioning of the pedals, although they've got a really nice feel to them, I would like that brake pedal to be a bit closer to the throttle because trying to heel and toe this thing is very difficult. I'm sure I'll get a bit better at it, but the pedals are just that bit too far apart for me to really engage with a heel and toe. And also the throw itself of the gearbox. Although I like the notchiness and the feel of the gear lever itself, it's quite hard to really throw in a fast shift. It's a little bit cumbersome to use. And for all the merit I've given this 1.8 liter engine, the sound is just never gonna be as good as something with more cylinders. In fact, it's one of those cars that when you really bring out the revs, it's what you might expect a cat to sound like when you step on its tail. It's just a bit of like, ah, get off. incredibly fun and rewarding to drive actually it is so practical yes it does have two seats in the back they're not really for carrying people but for chucking your gym bag on perfect or your camera equipment in my case I definitely can't go to the gym look at me and also then in the back you've got a huge boot and you can even put the seats down and use this thing as a van so the most surprising thing of all to me is why these things aren't more popular than they are I mean, I don't feel like I see that many of them on the road because you know when you buy a car or when you start looking for a certain car on Auto Trader, you seem to see millions of them all of a sudden. Now, I haven't really had that with this TT, so it makes me think there's just not really that many of them around, which surprises me because I feel like if all of you guys drove one and you haven't already, I think it would make you want one. And so, yes. I'm completely bowled over by the fact that I paid less than 800 quid all in for this car, and it's this good. But what's really impressive is that you can actually seek out a very, very nice 225 Quattro, or even a V6 if you want, for well under 5,000 pounds, which to me seems like a real bargain, especially if you're looking in the realms of Z4, maybe even MX-5, Porsche Boxster. This is really something you should absolutely consider. Having owned most of those cars I mentioned, actually I have owned all of those cars I just mentioned. This really 
really punches above its weight and, and actually is it's a standout. I think I said to my dad on, on the phone yesterday that this is quite possibly one of my favourite cars I've ever owned. Who would have thunk it, hey? Genuinely something I was terrified to call the missus about having done in accidentally purchasing this thing has now turned out to be a little bit of a love affair. So there we go. Anyway, hopefully this combination of words in this video has given you some form of impression of what it's like to drive a Mark 1 TT. Not only that, but also what this one is like. Very, very happy with it, as you can see. Now, as always, you know the drill by now. If you are enjoying the content with the TT, please do give it a thumbs up. That helps YouTube to rank it and also helps me to know that you guys want to see more. Do comment below as well. Let me know what you think I should do with this car. I have been noticing lots of quirky little features of this TT over the past few weeks driving it. And so if you'd like to see a five quirky features or five things you didn't know about the TT style video, then also comment below. Let me know if you'd like to see that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching this one. I really, really do appreciate all the support. And to be honest, after every video I post, I'm more or less blown away by some of the positive and, and lovely comments from all of you. I do really appreciate it. And even if I don't reply to you, I've probably seen it. So thank you so much. And I'll see you all very, very soon.